I think we're going to be able to offer a lot in the next year. Uh, Mass Effect 2 was extremely successful with the DLC, and now because of the addition of the Montreal team, we're able to do more, uh, bigger, larger, more. And so the next year is going to be pretty exciting. We talked about a couple DLCs over the last you know, two days. One was announced Thursday morning, the extended cut. We'll go into a little bit more detail on that one later. Oh, yeah. Uh, and then the Resurgence uh, DLC was announced this morning, so I'm not sure how many of you are familiar with it, because we're probably counting out the lines and packs, uh, but we have a new trailer that we'd like to show you. So.
that's not necessarily reflected in the ending scenes. We're definitely going to focus on things like that. We want to make sure that when you see the ending of Mass Effect, you now have the information and the context to feel satisfied. Um, and in general, we're really excited to be doing this. So bear with us over the next couple of months while we work on it. Uh, and it will come out, again, it will come out free. Uh, and currently, we're, we're shooting for a, a generic summer release, but we're, we're going to put the time and the effort into it that it takes. We're not going to rush it. But it's going to be done well. It's it's more than just a few cinematic scenes. It's more than just you know a, a small coat of paint. It is definitely a, uh, a considerable amount. Of that. So we're happy to be doing it.
We wanted the color to be right, and we wanted to essentially make it as close to the picture as possible. And it's not like it's the first picture that we stumbled across. We just we poured through thousands and thousands of pieces of source art to, to kind of lock in. Plus, there was the artistic vision. And so we were able to essentially combine those two into what you guys saw as Tally's face. Um, we, you know, we if I could jump in for yeah. a second, sure. Um, could, I don't know if she's still here, uh, could all the Samara cosplayers stand up? <laughs>
started out in Mass 2, we were about 23. I can't actually be correct, but I was actually there at the time. Um, in ME2, we were 55. ME3, 57. Wow. So we basically almost did the double amount of work. <laughs> we did the relative amount of time. But, but there's good reasons for that. Obviously, the difference between Mass 1 and Mass 2 were probably a little more obvious from, from the user perspective. The difference between Mass 2 and Mass 3 may be a little more subtle. But from our end, we see it as a lot more content. <laughs> Which is actually great to work with. Um, again, a couple of extra numbers. Number of plot values, the number of variables that designers play around with has increased insanely. Started off with about uh, 3,500 different plot values in any one. And then some of these are really, really minor. Have you completed this combat, for example? Um, in ME2, we bumped that up to about 6,400. I mean, he's got 15,000 plot states. <laughs> Thank you for being such a good quality assurance, is all I just said. <laughs> um, obviously, one of the things that we've, we've, we've voluntarily tried to push from MV1 to MV3 is digital acting. I mean, we, we like to read life in our characters. Um, and one of the ways we do that is by creating a set of rules that help us determine how an, a, a digital actor transforms from what an emotional state the other um, to give you know performance. Um, in ME1, the system we had uh, had about 3,000 rules to determine what should be playing at any one time. In ME2, five times as much, 15,000 rules. In ME3, 64,000 rules to just just to handle animation in a digital acting environment. You know, and, and I might want to add that we kind of created this problem for ourselves. <laughs> yes, this is what happens when you leave an, an open-ended game uh, with variable plot states. In each progressive game, you, you make things infinitely more complicated. And uh, yeah, so that was behind all of these things, Mass Effect 3 was the culmination of all of those plot states, all of those variables, all of those things. And uh, you know, that's, that's partially why we got, we got screwed me in. <laughs> it, was, it was difficult to do, and because of that, we had to work Sorry. So when we had the designers basically, you know, double the team, it's because they were they were not making it double the levels, but because they were making the double the content. Um, if you play Mass Effect 3 a number of times, you'll see a number of different things just in Mass Effect 2. Yeah, I think you, 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 I think the one thing that I'd like to insist on is that ME 3 has probably three or four times the amount of conditional content that ME 2 had. Um, because we were building on all the choices of ME1 and ME2, we had to painstakingly choose from a, an immense list of, of choice, and obviously we could address every single one. I mean, it's just not feasible. It's just not feasible. But I think that uh, with the design team and with the writing team, I think we came up with a set of important decisions, and sometimes not the decisions that you expected, which is quite often um, to try to make Mass 3 as much your story as it is ours. Very successful.
this because it's, it's a complicated idea that's full of a lot of politics, science, morality. And I realized in a lot of these cases, the best thing you can do is focus on the characters, which is what my does well. And I felt it, it was just really struggling with luck that up to that point, we never revealed what a female program looked like. It was something but mystery in MP. And I, it just struck me one day, which, well, here's the perfect way for the female program to make her entrance. Focus it all on her. We make it up that the, the cure to the gender page will all be about her character, her hopes and dreams for the program. I wanted to bring that in. Uh, so I wrote the mission, and actually, Alex helped on the mission. You've all played, I'm sure, the rescue for her on Sir Kesh. Uh, then we get back to the Normandy. We find out that there's this other side to Krogan. I wanted her to represent where well, the males are always about more violence, more and more violence. I wanted to show that there is another side to the because the trick is, face value, the Krogan, I don't know if they really deserve a cure given that it's always war violence, war violence. And, <laughs> and in the character of Eve, I saw an opportunity to present, nope, there is another side to the Krogan. They, they are worth saving. And that's, that's an, uh, an idea that I wanted to weave in throughout the whole genophage chart. So when I started writing the Tuchanka mission, where you actually go to cure the genophage or not, uh, it was a terrific collaborative effort Myself, cinematics, uh, design, art. I wanted the city that you saw in Tuchanka to reflect the fact that the Krogan weren't always you know, this violent, warmongering species. Once upon a time, they actually had culture. Um, I wanted to present the choice up front, which isn't something we always do, but you know going into that mission, you're going to have to decide am I going to cure the genophage or not. And I wanted to then leave that choice throughout the mission so it's always on your mind. It's this thing weighing on your conscience. Um, so when you, you, you get to the end, you've seen what the city looked like. You've heard Eve talk about her hopes for the Krogan. You've heard Rex or Reeve talk about their ambitions. Uh, which, in fact, was the next challenge of it, was all the choices and plot states they talked about. So you could go into this with, uh, well, how many people played it with Rex? How many people played with Reeve? It was an right. accident. <laughs> So not as many played with Reeve, but he's out there. So that that's a situation you have to address. But it was an opportunity to show with with Rex as the leader, maybe there's more hope for the Kroger. With Reeve as the leader, I mean, it is a little, a little iffy on how the Kroger will go. Um, so of course I'm developing this mission as I started writing it. I'm realizing this the spaghetti I'm tying myself up in, which is I've got Reeve talking to Morton, but Morton could be dead. Who's talking to? Paddock Wicks, who's the alternate for Morton, uh, talks to him. Patrick Wicks, Paddock Wicks, can you hear me? So that became a, just a logistical and technical challenge, just having all these potentially dead characters talking to potentially other dead characters. Well, I didn't do my own way. Getting into that notion of, of fan feedback and driving our process, I know a lot of people felt Rex, they wanted more of them in that spec too, and were hoping for more of in three. So I felt, all right, let's try and make that happen, despite you know the complications. Just really be loading these characters in memory, getting all these guys in the same scene is quite the feat. And I, my hat's off to our designers for making that all happen, so we can have all that great character interaction. Um, then the, 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 the ultimate challenge, of course, is how are we going to pay this off? How is this final moment going to happen? And I've been imagining for well over a year and a half the sequence of events where Someone's going up a tower, someone's going to release this cure, it's going to be this magical, awesome moment, the music will be there, and it just kept, it's like just kept envisioning it every day I came to work, trying to bring this to life. Um, and I knew it was going to work, because early on, I'd been going through some story concepts we'd all jotted down, and Patrick, who wrote Morton in Mass Effect 2, had written down, Morton should come to some sort of noble end. It's just an idea out there. And I saw that, we got together, and we suddenly realized what we could have there at the end. Which, <laughs> which for Patrick was, was, was I think, quite the opportunity to pay your character off. Yeah, I was, uh, I was really excited about Morton. Um, <laughs> yeah. So for me, Morton is, is two different characters. Uh, the first character is the one I was given. Uh, when 
I came on to Mass Effect 2. And I was told he's the scientist who redid the genophage. And my initial reaction was um, unrecordable, but translated roughly as that jerk. <laughs> because Rex was my bro. <laughs> Morton is 
possibly one of the only characters who will stand up to you, and not in a I am big enough to fight you way, but in an I believe in what I'm doing enough to stand up to Commander Shepard. <laughs> um, so, you know, he's one of the only followers that I can really see getting into that kind of standoff with. And Gordon, you know, Gordon never draws a gun. He doesn't think he's going to take you. But he believes in what he's doing enough to say, if you have to pull the trigger, do it, but I'm not stopping. Um, and wow, that was hard, right? <laughs> So who pulled the trigger? Yeah. You are all going to go. Hey everyone, look around you. Look at the hands that are up.
areas inside has emergency seals, and even some of the exterior areas have the same uh, aspects, the same kinetic barriers that are used to stop air from escaping. And we actually see this in the new room here, the are actually fighting off the external surface of the city. Yeah, so um, even if the citadel is destroyed, and if I remember right, in the, uh, in the control ending, it's not destroyed, but even in the ending in which the citadel is destroyed, it's not like the entire thing blows up. Like, there's definitely going to be casualties, but you see the arms come off in the large sections, and there's no reason that everyone on those is dead. Uh, you know, when, when we were writing role-playing plots, or, you know, uh, uh, post-traumatic Asari, or any flavor ambience, we wrote those assuming, you know, yeah, there's going to be a loss of life from when the citadel is hit by the reapers, and then when the citadel is used in the end game, but you can assume a lot of those people are still alive. You know, they were, they were indoors, they were behind a connect area. So that's you. Thank you very much.
the sentence is ending or two to be. Sorry, say again. If you could throw one character other than Commander Shepard into the sentence is ending, who would it be? It's quite the challenge for our cinematic. 